SpaceX has won a lot of well-deserved recognition and acclaim for its effort to reduce the cost of rocket launches during the past few years. The Indian Space Research Agency, or ISRO, on the other hand, is a less well-known organization. The cost of missions, particularly orbital missions, lunar missions, and even Martian missions, has been steadily declining for decades thanks to ISRO. So, here is the tale of ISRO, the underdog of space missions. But before we dive into that, hello there and welcome back to the Discover Space channel, where we explore cosmic possibilities and life beyond our own. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and let's hop on to the video. Although ISRO was formally established on August 15, 1969, the organization has a very long history. The oldest documented origins date to the 1920s and the Indian scientist S.K. Mitra. Mitra was well known for his ionosphere sounding research efforts. Ionosphere sounding is a communication method for locating the best radio frequency in a specific area. This knowledge aids researchers in their understanding of Earth's near-space environment and upper atmosphere. Prime Minister Nehru was persuaded to create the Indian National Committee for Space Research in 1962 by Vikram Sarabhai. India would soon start experimenting with sounding rockets, which ultimately resulted in the founding of ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization way back in 1969. The satellite launch vehicle, or SLV, was the first of five launch vehicles that ISRO has since constructed. The SLV was a relatively modest rocket with about 40 kilogram payload limit. Despite being very straightforward, it took ISRO seven years to create, and regrettably, the initial launch in 1979 would fail despite that. Just a year later, in 1980, Israel will attempt the SLV one more time. This time, the attempt would be indeed successful. India became the sixth nation to achieve orbit when Israel successfully launched the Rohini RS-1 satellite into orbit. SLV would later be applied twice more, with varying outcomes. The third launch was successful in and of itself. However, the satellite was placed in a dangerously low orbit, resulting in its deorbiting nine days after its launch. The fourth launch would occur in 1983, and since this mission was successful, ISRO was able to deploy an Earth observation satellite. Following the SLV's commercial success, ISRO set out to create the ASLV, a more sophisticated iteration of the SLV. The five-stage solid rocket known as the ASLV was designed to carry payloads to geostationary orbit. Sadly, this rocket would prove to be a huge letdown. The ASLV made four successful launches over the course of its existence with three failures. Given the ASLV's troubled background, ISRO decided to stop developing it and concentrate its effort on the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, or PSLV. The PSLV was created to launch payloads into sun-synchronous orbit, and it is this rocket that will serve as a true gauge of ISRO's prowess. Ironically, the PSLV's initial flight in 1994 would be a failure. Nevertheless, PSLV would go on to have a run of 50 successful missions. In fact, the PSLV is still in operation today, and it has successfully launched 342 foreign satellites from 36 different countries into varied orbits. The PSLV reportedly held the record for putting the most satellites into sun-synchronous orbit in a single flight until this year. The PSLV is not only a very dependable launch vehicle, but it is also quite economical. It is anticipated that each launch will cost around 18 and 28 million dollars. 
will round up to a higher estimate of $25 million for each launch. The PSLV costs $6,579 per kilogram and is capable of sending 3,800 kilograms into low Earth orbit. To put that into perspective, the future SLS rocket from NASA is anticipated to be able to send 70 metric tons into orbit, which will cost more than $2 billion per launch. Accordingly, the price per kilogram is $28,572, more than four times the price of PSLV. The Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle, or GSLV, was ISRO's next rocket. This has a payload capacity of 5,000 kilograms and is essentially an upgraded version of the ASLV. 13 launches have been made by the GSLV to date, with 8 of them being successful, 2 being partially failures, and 3 being total failures. Larger payloads are still launched into geostationary transfer orbit using the GSLV nowadays. And that gets us to the GSLV Mark III, the last rocket built by ISRO. The most potent rocket ever constructed by ISRO, and it can launch 10,000 kilograms into low Earth orbit. This was created in the early 2000s. The GSLV Mark III is quite cost-effective in terms of cost per kilogram, much like the PSLV. Each launch of the GSLV Mark III costs $51 million or $5,100 per kilogram. The GSLV Mark III has only launched four times, and yet each launch has been a success. Compared to the early days, it appears that ISRO has greatly increased their reliability. Moving on, let's have a look at some significant ISRO initiatives that were carried out using these rockets. For instance, the IRS series consists of several satellites in a sun-synchronous orbit. India is able to track and monitor natural resources such as freshwater thanks to these satellites. The INSAT series is a different set of satellites that ISRO oversees. In the Asia-Pacific, INSAT is the biggest domestic communications network. This organization offers broadcasting and telecommunication services from its position in geostationary transfer orbit. ISRO sent Chandrayaan-1 to the moon in 2008 using a modified version of the PSLV and the probe became the very first to verify the existence of water on the moon. The lunar poles are expected to contain more than 600 billion pounds of ice. This is according to Chandrayaan-1. The next attempt by ISRO wouldn't be quite until some time had passed, but it would be a huge improvement over Chandrayaan-1. Using the GSLV Mark III, Chandrayaan-2 was launched in 2009, and it contained an Indian-developed lunar orbiter, lander, and rover. With Chandrayaan-3, which is scheduled to launch in 2022, ISRO intends to attempt the soft landing once more. Moving on to their Martian mission, we have Mangalayan-1. ISRO launched Mangalayan-1 to Mars in November 2013. And in September 2014, the spacecraft successfully entered Martian orbit. India became the first nation to successfully enter Martian orbit thanks to this. But what's even more amazing is that they managed to finish the entire mission for a record low $72 million. To put this into perspective, the typical cost of a NASA-completed Martian orbital mission is hundreds of millions of dollars. Looking down on the road, ISRO is planning to send Shukrayan-1 to Venus in 2023, Aditya-L1 to the Sun in 2022, and Mangalayan-2 to Mars in 2024. They are also planning a voyage to Jupiter, but the specifics of that mission are unknown at this time. Given that their funding is being continually expanded year after year, ISRO's future appears exceptionally promising. 
In just the previous 10 years, the budget of Israel has tripled. When it comes to cost effectiveness, they are not quite as SpaceX's level, but they are miles ahead of other government-funded space initiatives. Given this, it won't be long before Israel puts people in space. Thank you so much for tuning in with us for yet another space possibility. Let us know what your thoughts are about Israel and how do you think they will manage in the future? Will they launch more successful missions? Or will they be the new SpaceX? Let us know what you think. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.